Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every week I'm anxious to bring you the word of God. My name is Kawaputu. And this week's series is very interesting. I always pray to God and ask Him to give me interesting topics. Topics that are relevant, that we need now to be a blessing to us. Amen. Now, this week, I'm dwelling on Luke chapter 1. And I'm dwelling on uh, Zacharias, Zacharias and the wife Elizabeth. These two. Amen. Zacharias and Elizabeth, these are interesting two characters which I want us to share, learn something about. And I'm Cloud. And this week, the title of my message is When Your Miracle Has Taken Too Long. When Your Miracle Has Taken Too Long. I'm sure this is very common with most Christians. There can be, it will be very rare for us to say there's a person whose miracle not taking too long. Or there's something that you are expecting, which you have not uh, had a long time. You need it, but you're not getting it. And you want it. You are, you are praying to the Lord for it. You are trusting Him for it. And you are not having it. Yes. And it's the same with Zacharias and Elizabeth. You know, these two, the couple were the Parents of John the Baptist. So let's look at something. I want to read um, Luke chapter 1, verse 5. He says, There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless, but they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well advanced in years. Amen. Now, it, this, this topic is very interesting. See, in this particular side aspect that I've read, you know, it speaks of uh, a couple who are righteous. Not that maybe they were sinners or they were just anyhow Christians living anyhow. Those were righteous people. They were very righteous and they were serving their God. Because look here, I said they were both righteous before God, not before man. There's a righteousness before man and there's a righteousness before God. Let me say that you can pretend. You can begin to do things in secret. And so for those secrets is God sees. Uh, God knows that your ways are crooked. But those same secret things can be hidden from man. And to you, man will be saying, Oh, look at that guy. He's holy, he's very pious, he's in the Bible, going to church, and everything. But to God, God knows that, Oh, this guy, no, 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 no. There's something wrong with him. A man is so pleased with you. He's so holy. You know, he's so holy and all that. And this one, the Bible says that these two, they were righteous before God. They were righteous before God. Let's, let's continue. He said, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the, and of the Lord, blameless. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well advanced in years. You see? These guys, these two, all their lives, all the, the Levites, they were priests and these people have served God. A long time, all their life. I believe that when they go married, they go married early. And when from year one, year two, they started praying, God give me a child, God give me a child, God give me a child. Then they were 30, then they were 40, Lord give me a child. Then they were praying, then they were fasting. Other men of God were helping them in prayer, and they were serving God more. They were they were sowing seed, trusting God. Everybody knew that these two were righteous before God. He said that they were they were blameless, they work in all, not in one. All the commandments and what else and the ordinances. 
today. That means they were upright. They were thoroughly upright before God. The Bible says that they, uh, they had a problem. They were childless. They didn't have a child. You know, our society believes that if somebody is having an issue, is having a problem, then that person might have sinned. Yeah. Problems can follow the believer because we have sinned. But it's always true. Even from this uh, 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 verse I've read, you will know that you can be very righteous before God, and yet you can have some problems. Zachariah and the wife, these were righteous people before God. Righteous before God, not before man. Even God uses his lenses and looks at them and says, Man, these guys are righteous. And yet they were childless. Yeah. You see, they were childless. And what do we say? He says that aside being child, so let's say when they were when they, um, they were 30 and then 40, 50, they were childless, it was okay, okay, fine, they were praying. Until they say that they were well stricken in age. That's why he means that they have gotten to a stage where their bodies like, are dead like uh, Abraham's own. Because they get to a stage where they are menopause. Now you don't have time. Now the problem is compounded. The problem is even bigger. You know, sometimes you can, as a believer, you can have certain issues and there was time, the clock is ticking, and you are trusting God that Lord, you have to do this for me before the day is over. And you quite realize the day is over, and your prayer, it looks as if God didn't hear your prayer. So now, two, these two, you don't have a child, you are hoping that you have a child until now you become an apostle, your system cannot, uh, uh, you can, cannot hold a baby anymore. And that's how it happens. And this is where some believers, they make stories. In the area. Suppose maybe if a pastor uh, didn't have a child, they would say, Oh, this pastor, um, uh, the way he's so friendly, that's why he's not having a child. But if he were to be kind, if he were to be someone who gives a lot, perhaps he would have had a child. God would have mercy on him. People would just reach all manner of stories. You see, that even makes the situation worse. And people are fond of doing that. Even Christians who go to big churches. Elders, they are doing that. If you see that somebody has a problem, all you do is that you are, you are, you are making crazy stories around it. I'm sure the things of uh, 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 this couple, some people were making stories about it. Yeah, were crazy stories about it. They say, look at them. Because of what, this one thing that they did, that is why they are not happy. If they had done it, you know, like with Job's friends, some people, they, they become prophets over your life. And then they are saying things. They say, you are having one problem, and people are making all manner of interpretations why you are having that problem. But they are not God. They are not God. And let me tell you, there are some people who are even happy. They are happy that you are going through what you are going through. And there is something in the Bible that says that if you are happy eh, over somebody's trouble, God becomes angry with you. If you are if somebody goes into trouble, somebody has a problem, somebody is going through something, and you are enjoying over it, Bible says God will be angry with you. And let's watch the way we criticize people too much. Because in life, I remember I was listening to a, a bishop, and he said something. He said, what you criticize people up, up and on most of the time, you also become a victim. You also end up doing the same thing. And time and time again, I've seen it happen. If somebody... Maybe it's facing some financial issue, and you are laughing at that person, and you are telling everybody, and you are spreading it. You want to feel like that person cannot do anything about it. Before you realize, you also end up doing the same thing. Let's be careful about creating uh, uh, stories over people's problems. These were righteous people, and they were having problems. My friend, that's why when you are a believer and you are going through certain things, don't say God has rejected you. Don't say God doesn't care about you. Don't say maybe you, you are not righteous before God. The career and the wife, these were righteous before God all the days of their life. And look at, look at what they were going through. Hallelujah. But you know, I like something. They were very constant in their work. Today, they are believers. You know, if this person, God doesn't do this for this particular person, that is all. They will quit. He or she will quit coming to church. They will quit serving God. 
It's like they have made that they have given God an ultimatum. Lord, I am going to work with you, but I'm not going to work with you for better for, for, for better. I'm going to work with you for better alone and not for worse. God, I'm not going to work with you, but if you don't know and this thing happens to me, I'm not going to work with you again. I'm going to quit my relationship with you. That's how most Christians are. That's how they are. You see them dress nicely on Sunday, going to church, or when you stand there preaching that you know. That if something negative happens to them, that is the end of their work with God. That is the end of their work with God. The Bible says these two, they were constant all the days of their life. They have served God right from the beginning of their marriage. So that believe that they married early and they have prayed, prayed 10 years, 20 years. So let's say that if they married at the age of uh, 25, or let's say 30, 30, then 40, then 50, 60, 70, many years. And yet they were constant. They never turn their back on God. What are you going to? And how is your work with the Lord? Are you faithful with Him? Are you very sincere and righteous? Are you constant? When you are going through something, that is not the time to be loud. That is not the time to cut corners. Let us let the Lord be glad about that. That this my son, my daughter went through something and he didn't turn his back on God. So sometimes God Confess that. Zacharias is a good example. They are righteous people by all standards, and yet they had issues. That's all. So, if you are working with God well, you are believing, you are pastor, you are serving God well, and maybe perhaps you are having a small job, you have you been in ministry for many years, and your other, uh, uh, your, 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 your other pastors like you, you are also having a ministry, but they have, they have seen like they have bypassed you, they have gone, they are making it, but you are alone. That's what God is wrong with me. And your situation is like uh, 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 Zacharias and the wife. Don't turn your back on God. These things happen to believers. That is why those who go about parading that if you are a believer and you work well with God, everything is supposed to be perfect with you. What we've just read here, this case study tells us that you can be a believer and you can be working with God very well, but you can still lack one or two things. You can have certain challenges in your life. Go through the Bible. Was, look at Job's situation. He was righteous. I'm saying he was perfect before God and he had a problem. So when people are having problems, we shouldn't create issues out of it so much. And when we are having problems, we are going through certain challenges. Let us learn to be faithful. I would say in all things, Job sinned not. And when one day they came and they report they reported to him all the negative things that were happening to him. I would say that God he went on, he fell down before God, he praised God, he gave him thanks. That's what that's supposed to be our example. That should be the example of the believer. Hallelujah. So they had two problems. One was that um, they were childless. Two, now they are entered into a period where they cannot have child. Now the situation is worse. It looks hopeless. Hallelujah. It looks hopeless. Let's continue. On. Verse, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 8. So, so it was. While he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were prayed outside at the hour of incense. Serving God while you are having problems. Serving God while you are facing financial challenges. People believe that if you just pray, why don't you go and find some job to do? Why are you doing this work of God and you are going through all manner of things? Why don't you go and find some job to do? Well, work. Forget about this ministry, ministry thing. What can we do for you? Forget about serving the church. What have they done for you? No, they were not like that. They were ministering to God all the days of their life. They worked in righteousness for God. And I hope that we also we emulate their example. Hallelujah. Eleven. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Hallelujah. I like this aspect a lot. An angel of the Lord appeared to him. This tells me that there's a day of visitation for all of us. God has created a system, a system of recompense, a system of visitation for all of us. If you read Psalm 91, it says that the angels of God encamp around those who fear him. Psalm 91, there are scriptures in the Bible that says that. Angels of God are with us. Remember when Elijah 
the, the soldier, the fifty soldiers came up and, and he had one care. He had one said, a uh, uh, man of God, you don't know the people are surrounded and say, Lord, open your eyes and let, let me see. And then he opened the eyes of the Lord opened the eyes of Elias. Bible said there was there were angels all around them. But the man of God said, They that I would have are more than those who came against us. Do you see? And they were all man of people. And there are so many angels around them. So the angels of God encamp around those who fear. Bible says that it's a man one. He said the angels of God will bear you up so that you don't hit your feet against you. So if you're a believer, always you have an angel. Bible says that even children are angels. Children are angels. So for every believer, there's a day of visitation. Hallelujah. There's a day of visitation for you for that issue that you are going through. There's a day of visitation for you, my friend. God will visit you. Say amen. God is going to visit you and turn that situation around. When people have given up on you, when people are uh, saying all manner of stories around it, and you look at it, your miracle, that thing that you are praying for, has taken too long. There's a day of visitation. And that day will be your Kairos moment. Meaning, it, it will be the proper time of the Roma. There's a day of visitation. There's a day of visitation from heaven. Heaven visits all of us. There is no believer who cannot say that uh, they don't have miracles. I have had countless miracles of God in my life. I have had count, countless visitations. By visitation, I mean breakthroughs. Yes. And sometimes nobody, I, 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 nobody could help me. Then, unexpectedly, God does something for me. Things that is like there's no hope for me. Looking at my condition, then God does. I have countless stories. Countless stories. Countless stories. That is a visitation for all of us. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand that you are going through an issue, but God has a solution. There's an angel of an angel for you. There's a day when God will visit you and solve that problem for you. Zacharias and the wife looked as if it's over for them. Game over. The rest has whistled. And it's over. One man of God said, It is not over until you win. For many years of your life, they never had a child until they enter into their man of God, and that is that's it. It's the end. And God says, I am the one who is able to resurrect the one who has been dead for four days. I'm the one who is able to resurrect the one who has been dead for four days. So, though your things are is over, all hope is lost. You have given up. Let me tell you, you don't have to give up. And God sent the angel and visited them. Hallelujah. So let me tell you something. That's the visitation for you. Amen. Now, now visitations, one thing that I want you to understand about visitation is that visitations don't just happen. Miracles don't just happen. Breakthroughs don't just happen. They are processes. Nothing in life happens by accident. Somebody has to do something before they have their miracle. And that's what I want you to understand. Because in this uh, 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 case study, you will see. Let me continue. He said, we will see the answer in verse 13. Look at one verse 13. Uh, let me start. Verse, it says, uh, uh, 11. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. You see, and when Zachariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell on him. The angel of the Lord appeared to him when he was standing uh, right at the right side of the altar of incense, and he was troubled and fearful of him. 13. But the angel of the Lord said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. Hallelujah. When the angel of God appeared, the angel of God appeared when the man was worshiping God. That is why it is not wise for you when. You are having issues to build up on God and quit church and say, I'm tired, I don't have money, I don't have money to pay off, so I'm not going to church, I don't have of things. When God will come, God will come to you when you are worshiping Him, when you are in the process of worship, when you are working in holiness, when you are working right on when you are being obedient to Him, when you are doing His work, that is when He will show up. So, what if on the day of visitation, this man did not go to offer sacrifices to God? What do you think would have happened? What do you think would have happened? Would He have met His miracle? So it's wrong when we have issues and we stay out of the way of God because we are discouraged. No. He said what? The angel said, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. So you see, Zacharias prayed. Zacharias
Zachariah, Zachariah prayed. And I'm sure he has been praying all his life because of this one issue. God, you have given me everything. I have denied me a child. What's the view of this? My cars, my houses, Lord, and the land. If I don't have a child. Eh? What, what, uh, and I don't have anybody who carry my carry my, that my name. And as a priest, I need another person to go to continue. So why have you given me everything? What is this mockery? People are laughing at me. Zachariah didn't quit. He prayed. And that should be our example. When you are having a problem, you are having a challenge, you should take it to God. Sometimes we tell everybody in town. You see this person, you call the person, you tell him, you call this one, you tell the person, you call this one, you tell the person. Except God. Your prayers are few. But your words outside are many. That's all. This man sent the prayer. But then he said, he said, then he said, look, do not be afraid. For your prayer is heard. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son. Prayer! Prayer. And you shall call his name John. Amen. What kind of prayer did Zachariah and the wife pray? He said, your, your prayer has been heard, and I want to bear uh, you a son. And you shall call his name John. The miracle that is coming, God has already named it. God has already named it. He said, and you have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will tell many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. So, from the way I see it, this man did not pray a selfish prayer. God, I need this miracle. I need this miracle. I need that. Help me. Lord, help me. No. He prayed. Like, I cannot pray. Say, Lord, if you give me this child, I'll give it back to you. The child to you. So, the Lord tied uh, his agenda to Zachariah's miracle. When I'm having, when I need finances, I say, Lord, help me. Let me help me. Um, you know, these people in my area, that, that family, that couple that is going to a lot. Lord, I'll help pay uh, one of their children's fees. So, Lord, those people at the hospital who are having this problem, I'll, 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 I'll go and buy some things for them. Always tie your prayer with something to God's interest. Tie your prayer uh, to the needs of the society. Yes, that, and that's what he did. Because the angel of God says, Zachariah, your, your prayer has been answered. And you see the way how he narrated everything. That you, uh, your son, you are going to have a son, and your son is going to be a blessing to his generation and all that. That's how we are to pray. Hallelujah. And today, I want to uh, uh, talk about something, introduce something small about prayer. And I call that one the prayer red angle. Meaning that prayer doesn't stand alone. A lot of people believe that. You can just live any life eh, and still have your prayer answered. So some people, they don't know how to talk. They go about disturbing people and leaving all manner of wayward living. But you find them at all night, praying, binding the devil, binding, speaking in powerful tongues. If you hear their tongues, eh, if you hear their tongues, you think these people, they just descended from heaven. Or you think the devil will die. The way their mouth is loud. But go into their private life and see the way they live. So you see, so prayer itself cannot work by itself alone. That's why I said, because a red angle has one minute side, four sides. So like I said, prayer is only one side. When you pray, you should work what also in holiness. Holiness, righteousness. Holiness before God. Bible says, blessed are the pure in spirit, for they shall see God. If you are not pure before God, if you are not pure before God, how can God answer you? I'm going to hear your prayer. So just pray for praying sake. That Lord help me, God help me, God help me. That one is not enough. The one side of prayer is that it's like a table with four legs. One side is that what you should walk in holiness. The hot, the other side what is the word of God. So you need to know the word of God. My friend, prayer is nothing without the word of God. Prayer is rubbish without the word of God. Let me say that. Why? Because have I told this story on this channel before? I said uh, 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 many years ago, I went to a place to go and pray. I was ministering actually. While ministering and prophesying and ministering to the people, then uh, the Lord asked me that ask this, this lady what she's been praying for. I'm the prophet there. I was prophesying that day. If anything, I'm the one who's supposed to say, lady, you 
uh, and you are praying about it, but the Spirit of God says, Ask now in my head, I'll say, God, thank you, I'm about Everybody know me to be a prophet, to be a prophet here. And in the meeting, I'm supposed to ask the lady. But I was obedient to her, ask the lady. I said, Woman, the Spirit of God says, I should ask you, what are you asking me to do for you? And the woman said, uh, I am asking God to uh, 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 give me a financial breakthrough so that I can op open uh, 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 an alcoholic bar. That means a petition bar. Or let me say, a uh, 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 beer bar. You know, alcoholic beverages. That's what the woman was believing God for. And praying. And that day, if you see the way she was praying and feeling this, this shot every woman praying. I, I was even impressed. Don't bring me up. Ask God, God, give me breakthrough. It's like with that, uh, what was required for? It's like somebody said, Lord, give me this person's husband. No, give me this person's husband. How can God answer such a selfish prayer? How are you hoping this, uh, this kind of bad, where you are selling this kind of alcoholic beverages, where people come and drink and they go and beat their wives, where people come and drink and they come and waste all their money and drink and then fall on the floor and some drink and, 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 and have accidents and all those ones. God can answer such a prayer. I believe. If that woman knew the word of God, that woman wouldn't have prayed that selfish prayer. And that day when the woman mentioned what she was praying for, the, everybody, the people stopped and they opened their mouth. Hey, is that what you are praying for? Asking God to, to give you money so that you open a holy bar, working for the devil. That's why I said one of the points of prayer is that you should have the word of God. You should pray. Align your prayer by the word of God. Jesus said that you pray and you don't receive because you pray. Line with your selfishness. And when you are selfish, God cannot answer your prayer. So pray. But don't pray alone. Walk in holiness, righteousness. Then the, the, the third thing is what? The third thing is that know the word of God. And the fourth thing is what? Faith. If you read James chapter 1, it says that the one who doubts cannot have his prayers answered. If you doubt, you cannot have your prayer answered. He said, for, for the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, and let him not think that he can receive anything of the Lord. If you are double-minded, if you don't have faith, you need to use faith to push your prayer. Like my favorite scripture in um, Mark chapter 10, verse 16. Jesus said, have faith in God. He said that, for well, if you shall say unto this, this mountain, be thou move, uh, be thou uh, 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 this mountain, we move uh, into the forest. And no doubt, double minded. Double minded. Two, so, prayer and walking in holiness, righteousness. The word of God and faith, among other things, will cause your prayer to work. So if you are praying, but I don't have faith, then work on your faith. Work on your faith. Faith is very important to Jesus. Of late, I've heard. The pastors criticizing faith. He said, when you go to people that uh, you, are, you need a miracle and you ask them to pray for you, they say, oh, you don't have it because uh, you don't have faith. Maybe with Jesus. What's that? Eh? When Jesus went to his own town and he said that a prophet is not honored in his own uh, home, and said, you could then not do uh, no miracle because the people didn't believe in him. If you don't have faith in God, it will impede your prayers. It, 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 it will hinder your prayers. You have to work in faith. So prayer alone, when you are going for a long night, just have this short checklist. This one checklist. I've just given you four. I've just given you four. But the other thing, but I believe that if you have this four, it's okay. You can receive your miracles of God from God. But when he said in Mark 11, 22, that was when he said talk about prayer, he mentioned faith over there. And look, how can you have faith without the word of God? Because faith coming by the word of God. You see? And how can you have the word of God if you don't want to write your prayer? So everything is linked. It's linked. A table with four legs. A table with four legs. That's why I said rect rectangle. Because I said that one because of the four aspects of it. Human beings, how many? We have two hands, uh, uh, two legs. Making it four. Animals, they have four. Two alone is. You cannot depend on two alone. If your vehicles have what? Four legs. Look at four tires. And the one that has three, we call it Aboboya. Would you like to sit in an Aboboya and travel to very long distance? Who would like to use that one? Or a motor? 
long distances. We don't know that it's not that safe. If the four tires are having an accident, why would you like to go on two? And so for you to just pray alone and not have faith, not have the word of God, not walk in holiness, righteousness, that one, how can your prayer be answered? That's why well, recently I was in my house, I was, and I've done, I had so many prayers, but then the word of God said, my son, you see all these people that are praying, there are some of them that are not even, I don't even hear their prayers. I said, oh, then this scripture came to mind. It said, for your iniquities has hid what my faith from me, so that I cannot hear you. There's a scripture that is in the Bible. Your iniquities. That's why I said, you walk in holiness. Else, set as a barrier where God cannot hear your prayer. Zacharias prayed, and God heard his prayer after many years. Yes, even if he delayed, God heard his prayer. God heard his prayer. So I believe that for his prayer to, to have been answered, all these things were in place. Uh, in place, prayer, holiness, the word, and faith. Don't let anybody deceive you. Look through your Bible. Look for scriptures on faith. Look for scriptures on holiness, righteousness. Look for scriptures on the word of God. And see, and how to align your, 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 your prayer by the word of God. Hallelujah. Just as I just said that, Zachariah tied his prayer to God's interest, to the needs of the people. I'm not this A lot of people have done it. God never answers our prayer for that one thing. When God gives me something, it's not for only me. He thinks about a whole lot of people. Prayer is important. Prayer will cause your miracle to come quickly. And before your visit, the day of visitation will come for you. You, you need to be in prayer more. No matter, I was speaking to a friend. He just graduated uh, in theology, in Barton. And I said, oh, my brother, this is I'm going to, and you know what he told me. He said, oh, why don't you pray and fast? I said, ah, as I'm going to ministry school and graduating, is that advice you give me that I should pray? You give me an advice that I should pray after going through all this Bible school and doing all these courses. Somebody, though even those who have not uh, attended Bible school, they know that when you are in theology, you should pray. So prayer is number one. You can go to Bible school and do all the courses and get even to the PH level, but you cannot leave prayer out. That is how essential prayer is. And you can't pray and say, I've given up, I've lost hope. These people, the clients and the wife, they have prayed many years. They have prayed for a long time. And so that's how we also must well pray. If you want a miracle to come, you need to be in prayer. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at something here. In the Luke chapter 1, verse 15, it says, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Hallelujah. I like the Holy Spirit aspect about it. In my messages, one of the re my major revelations is on the Holy Spirit as a minister of God. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, should I, let me read it. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, it says here so, and let me just open it. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Whenever I share the word of God and I get to a place that talks about the Holy Spirit, I like to talk and salute him because he's my master, he's my friend. I've known him many years, I cannot live without him. He's all I have. The Spirit of God is much more important to me than anything in the world. He said, Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, he said, the earth was without form and void. The earth was without form and void. That form there, in the in the in the Hebrew word, it is um, the Hebrew word. I think it's tohu, yes. And then the void there. The, 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 the Hebrew word there means that what? It's sort of uh, um, a wilderness. A wilderness. There's nothing there. Form, formless, shapeless. Nothing is going on. Like waste. The earth was like the waste. And then the void there means emptiness, the wastefulness, and then empty. He said, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the spirit of God was hovering over the, the face of the waters. Flatter. Was, uh, if you go to the root word, it says, was flattened over the waters, like a bird flapping the wings like that, and standing, waiting to do something. And here, the, 
in the case of Zacharias and Ryan, then John the Baptist, like, is it right from the inception that, it, that the, the Holy Spirit is involved? One of the ways by which we can have our visitation is also the, we engage in the Spirit of God. I would say that the earth was wasteful, was in wastefulness, wasted. There was nothing was going on. And because nothing was going on, there was emptiness. Some people, their lives are like that. That's why you are believing God for that miracle. That's why you are believing God for that breakthrough. That's why you are trying to go, Lord, my miracle has taken too long. And the Spirit of God can make that miracle happen. Why? You see, the Spirit of God was, another translation, brooding over the waters. Eh? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. He is the chief executive. He's the one who makes things happen. Look through your Bible. Wherever the Holy Ghost is, things happen. Wherever the Holy Spirit is, things happen. And if you're a believer and you want miracles to happen in your life, you want to break, you want to move out, you want to advance, you need the Holy Spirit. You need to work with the Holy Spirit. You have to make him your friend. You have to make him your senior partner. You have to respect him. You have to acknowledge that he is in your presence. Sometimes I wake up, I say, Lord, good morning, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I greet you. I say, Lord, what do you want me to do? What is happening with the Holy Spirit? When he speaks to me, even if I don't understand, I, 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 I endeavor to do it. I make sure I do it. Even if when I don't understand, is it everything that the Lord will ask you to do that you, 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 you can understand? No. And sometimes some, there are some things, it will be good before you understand. Sometimes, yes, some of them you might not understand it. Why God says you should go here or you should do that or you should show that you should help that person. You never know. You might never know. And most of the miracles that I've received in my life, I realized that when God says go here, He wouldn't tell me that you are going to receive something from there. But the moment I, I get there, then there's a breakthrough for me. And I say, oh, because if He had said, oh, go there, you have this, oh, then I'll be. So it's, 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 I don't know if He's testing me or what. But sometimes the one thing I'm noticing about the Holy Spirit, I can just keep thought that go here, don't go, this thing, that He will give you any reason. And the Spirit of God moved over the waters. Moved over the waters. Then the moment the word of God came, the let there be light. Then the Spirit of God recognized it that. This is it. Zechariah okay, chapter 4. He said, Speak unto Zerubbabel. That is not the human being mind. It's not the human being strength. It says, By the Spirit. My own wisdom can do nothing. My own knowledge. My own mind can do nothing. But by the Spirit of God, I can do it. When we are having challenges, we should learn to work with the Holy Spirit. Let's seek the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's engage the Holy Spirit. And by His help, we will come out of it. Hallelujah. Now, now in the next session, I will, I will, I will, I will talk about handling divine visitations. Amen. Lord, I thank you for your word. I pray that you would help my listener and release that miracle that has taken so long. He or she will be sent to the spirit.